welcome to Zion Teacher Series, which is presented by Zion Fellowship International. Zion Fellowship is a Christian fellowship of churches and Bible schools located in the US, Canada, and around the globe. Our featured speaker is Dr. Brian J. Bailey, the president of Zion Fellowship International. Dr. Bailey is an international Bible teacher, and in more than 50 years of ministry, he has traveled to over 100 countries, ministering in churches, pastors, seminars, and Bible schools. He is a prolific author of over 50 books. Our topic is Wisdom Literature, which refers to two of the books that King Solomon wrote, the book of Proverbs, which is filled with detailed instructions on daily living, and the book of Ecclesiastes, which shows us, these, which shows us the true values in life. Join us today as we open our hearts to what the Lord has to say from wisdom literature. Welcome again to our study on the book of Proverbs. As we've said before, written by King Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, with the exception of the Lord Jesus Christ, who said, a greater than Solomon is here. But Solomon was filled with the wisdom of God. And he made many significant observations in this book of Proverbs. And I think none is greater really than his last chapter. Chapter 31 of the book of Proverbs. And essentially the title of this chapter is The Virtuous Woman. And now we are going to see what King Solomon says are the qualities of a virtuous woman. Well, first of all, he defines her value and says that her price is beyond rubies. Well, rubies was a stone that was highly prized at that time in the Middle East and those who were rich sought to accumulate as many rubies as they possibly could but King Solomon says look wisdom is greater than rubies and so is a virtuous woman her price is beyond compare and then he starts to comment on the various aspects of the virtuous woman. And we want to look at them very carefully from Proverbs chapter 31. Firstly, he says, the heart of her husband, you know, is at rest. In other words, she is faithful and he has no thought that she would go after other men. And he is at rest. You know, that's one of the beauties of marriage. When you have a faithful partner, the other one's heart is at rest. Is at rest. And uh, I think that is one of the greatest things that one could ask in marriage. That you know that your wife or your husband would be faithful to you. And how many heartaches do we have as pastors when we have to counsel members of the congregation who say, well, I cannot trust my husband or I cannot trust my wife. And the result is that in spite of all your efforts, so often a divorce looms. Well, The virtuous woman is someone, you know, who gives you no second thoughts. You know, you trust, they will keep their marriage covenant. And that is one of the beauties of marriage. And then uh, various aspects of her life, she will do him good all the days of his life she will do him good you know isn't that wonderful 
everything that she does will be for his benefit and for his good. You know, of course, as I said before, being a pastor, you hear so much. You know, and one of the things that you hear quite often regretfully, oh, my husband doesn't care what I do. My, he doesn't want me to know what I do or he does. In other words, there's no compatible thinking, if I could say that. You know, as to what can I do to please my husband or what can I do to please my wife? You know, if you're happily married and if you fall into this category of a virtuous woman or a virtuous man, you know, your thoughts are constantly, how can I bless my wife or how can I bless my husband? And the thought is, what good can I do for him? Well, this virtuous woman, it says of her that all the days of her life she will do him good. And we want to be like that when we are married. And then, she's a hard worker. She seeketh wool and worketh with her hands to produce garments for him and garments for all her household. For this virtuous woman we're speaking of obviously um, had a large house, had many uh, servants, and she was responsible because after all the wife is responsible for the house. You know, the husband, his work is essentially outside the house, outside the home. And he comes in after a hard day's work, and he doesn't want to have to think of what he should do in the home or what he should do, you know, in the house, the physical house. But that is taken care of by the wife. And the atmosphere, the ambience, you see, of the home is created by the wife. You know, uh, I had a mother-in-law whom I had never met. Never met because she died before we were married. But my wife said this, that whenever her father would entertain businessmen, they would come into the home and have a meal. And essentially, they all made more or less the same comment, how peaceful this home is, how peaceful it is. Well, you see, she saw that all the people in her household were well clothed and she worked hard at it. And then, going on, there's a little, a little phrase here that's very in, interesting. Uh, and she brings her food from afar. Now that's an interesting little statement. And we could interpret it like this. You know, she wasn't just content, you know, to produce a mundane meal. But she sought out other food that would give variety. And so, you know, her husband wasn't going to be faced every time he came back with the same old meal time and time again, which was quickly gotten from a supermarket. No. But uh, she, you know, sought out recipes. She sought out food from afar. And she enhanced the quality of her table and uh, obviously uh, delighted the palate, the stomach of her husband. Food from far. You know, it is said, it's a kind of a truism, that the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. And you know, you seek a variety of 
enjoyable foods, food from afar, you're going to win the heart of your husband. All right, another thing about her was she was an early riser, an early riser. Oh, how wonderful that is to rise early. I'm not going to say at what hour one should arise because in various countries it varies. But nonetheless, if we arise early, we get a lot of things done before the actual work day begins. And this woman was an early riser. You know, one who had the breakfast ready for her husband when he came out of the shower in a dress and everything. And here is the uh, breakfast all ready for him. You know, it starts the day off well, doesn't it? And how wonderful if she has done her devotions by then. It's very good to do your devotions early in the morning. You know, there's a little phrase, you know, about sheep. Sheep quench their thirst basically from two sources. One is from a stream, but the other is from the dew on the grass that comes just before daybreak. And the sheep, you know, chew the grass, you know, early in the morning, and the dew is fresh on the grass, and they quench their thirst. And you know, it's so good to have devotions early in the morning, because by then, you know, you're all prepared and strengthened for the day. And then, uh, goes on, you see, and so she provides, being an early riser, for her household. Everything is in order for them. And then, uh, this virtuous woman is something of a businesswoman. It says she buys a field. Now, I don't want to dwell too deeply in this because it depends on the various households, but nonetheless, it shows that she was a very good businesswoman. A very good businesswoman. And you know, being a businesswoman has many advantages. You know, she's going to budget well the money that is provided for the household. You know, I've met so many women, you know, the husbands are almost tearing out their hair because the women don't know how to spend money and uh, the result is develop penury in the household and uh, cause the uh, husband to be exasperated and maybe to go in debt. How important it is, you see, like this woman, she knew what to do. She bought a field that it, which in turn would produce see, something that would produce money for the household. And then another thing concerning her, you know, she built, or yes, I could say that she built a, a vineyard. And uh, again, you see, that was very prized in those days, a vineyard that produced wine and obviously good crops and therefore produced wine for the household and also that which could be sold. In other words, she was a productive woman. We're told that she was strong. And that again is very important, you know. And I've read no end of books and so forth. And uh, one book in particular, it was written actually, the autobiography of Agatha Christie, who was the... Uh, well, shall I say, the author of crime, authoress of crime, uh, writing in England, you know, uh, in the last century. And you know, one of the things that she advocated girls to do was to be weak and just lay about on the couch and then they would receive, you know, from their husband all kind of solace. Oh no, that's not what a husband wants. He wants a wife that is strong physically, strong mentally, and can accomplish, you know, the work that she needs to do. 
You don't want some frail violet. No, you want someone who's strong. And then it goes on. You know, her merchandise is good. She was very productive. But something else that was very interesting, her candle goes not out at night. You know, in olden days, and in fact, days in which I used to live, you know, you always had a candle, in uh, a lighted candle in your bedroom. And the idea was if you got out at night, you know, you would be able to see. It was the only light that guided you at night, a candle. There was no other form of light. And you see, if that candle went out, when you were in dark, you had no idea what time it was, and so forth. You were completely dependent upon that candle. And so, the lady of the household would make sure that the candle that was placed in your room you know, would last all night. And uh, that essentially is the comment that's made here, that the candle would not go out by night. And uh, then another interesting thing, that she weaved with her own hands cloth, and she didn't have eyes just for her husband or for her household, But her eyes, if I could say like this, were like branches that went over the wall. And she saw the poor and their needs. And because of that, what did she do? She provided extra for them too. You know, blessed are they that care for the poor. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And so she had a bountiful eye. She saw the needs of those beyond her home and she cared for them. And uh, as we go on, she was not afraid, you see, of any evil that would come. She was not afraid of the cold because her household was all well clothed. And strength and honor, this is a beautiful statement, strength and honor were her clothing. You know, she was strong, she was honorable, she was highly respected. And do you know what it says here? That her children, her children would rise up when she came in. You know, that is a mark of respect. The children respected their mother. Why? Because of her lifestyle. And not only that, her husband would praise her. Her husband would praise her. The children would call her blessed and rise up when she came into the room. Her husband would praise her. Isn't that... Whatever his wife yearns for, the praise of her husband, to know that her husband realizes the work that she does for him. And you know, every wife wants a little bit of praise, a little bit of recognition. Well, you see, this wife got it because of her lifestyle. And you see, it also says, because of this, she would rejoice in time to come. In other words, she was indeed giving her life, if I could say this, her home, a very good foundation. And the future, she would rejoice in. And I cannot overemphasize this, you know, in life. You know, when you're young, work hard. You see, do things right. And you'll have a joyful future. You'll have a joyful future. And this woman, you see, was told that in time to come, she would rejoice. Oh, isn't that wonderful? She would fear no evil because, you know, she did things right. She would have no fear of the future. Well, we come on. 
she obviously had a ministry because it says she openeth her mouth in wisdom and in her tongue was the law of kindness now in my mind I go back to a certain lady that I knew she actually was one of the aunts of uh, my wife and you know she was very industrious she worked hard first of all she worked as the cashier of her husband's restaurant and uh, she ensured that the budget was right and you know they made a profit and whilst he did all the cooking and had others to cook you see she took care of for financial matters she worked hard but she didn't content herself with just that no she was a bible woman she was a bible teacher and so she took time to take the adult sunday school class at church she took time to have other little bible classes for women in various parts of the town in which she lived and she had a wonderful name you see just like this virtuous woman you see the law of kindness was in her mouth and she was known for the encouragement you know women would come to her for counsel and she would have a kind word a word of wisdom for them you know counsel to perhaps help them in the trial that they were going through and she was very well known well we go on and uh, another comment was made about her and perhaps not really necessary after all we have read about this wonderful woman but it says this the bread of idleness she did not eat she did not eat in other words there was no idle moment in her life and I remember talking to a certain lady and uh, she had spent about four hours reading something that really didn't profit well after four hours the Lord spoke to her and said look those four hours were wasted in your life they had no profit at all and she really repented and she wanted to ensure that everything that she did afterwards you know her time counted for something that would produce eternal fruit and so that is one of the things spoken of about this lady and uh, you know there's something else here that's very interesting indeed you know because of her works she was to be praised not only in her own household but also outside outside the uh, shall I say the home she was very well known and you know I found this that uh, a person who is diligent a person who's hard hardworking a person that looks after shall I say her home and is well known in the church you know her name is spread around the village or spread around the town and people speak very highly of her very highly of her you know King Solomon said this in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 1 he said a good name is better than silver and gold and the question that one would have to ask oneself is this looking at this description of the virtuous woman and how shall I say you know she was praised by her husband you know the children would 
stand up when she came in. They respected her. You know, the question that one would have to ask ourselves is this. Well, she had a good name. Do we have a good name? You know, one of the things I face as a pastor is young people who do not respect their parents. And I've often asked myself, well, the parent seems to be a nice person and so forth. Why don't the children respect them? Well, it is because at home, you know, there's another standard. And actually, the parents do not live their testimony at home and therefore the children have no respect for them. Now, a good name, not only outside, but a good name inside, is to be much desired. And then, finally, we come to this thought. The fruit of her hands, the fruit of her hands, In other words, what she has accomplished and the hard work that she has done, the fruit of those hands will be praised. They'll be recognized far and wide. And you see, that's what we want. We want a life that is productive, a life that is virtuous, And in so doing, we will have a good name. And that good name will be remembered far and wide. And it will be remembered even after we leave this world. We will leave something in this world. It will be a good name. And it will be, as it were, a role model for others to follow. And so I commend to all you ladies, and the men too, that you study this last chapter, chapter 31 of the book of Proverbs, the virtuous woman, and use her as a role model. And by the grace of God, you know, you will have nothing but joy and happiness in your life through hard work and a life dedicated to the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you.